Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever it is, wherever you are. Welcome to another episode of The Sensing Show. Uh, so today, i uh, got a little bit of time before the wife gets back home, and I thought I would get into one of the best, I think if only, if maybe the best, if not, I don't know, greatest Macross game that they ever made. It's the uh, Sega M, uh, M2, AM2, uh, it's the Chojiku Yosai Macross. I'm pretty sure I said that wrong. Um, this was one of my favorite games. Um, once when they came out with it, it was hard for me to obtain it um, because it's a Japanese import only. I mean, hell, I've still got the save card with my uh, super, uh, super rank on all ships and everything else um yeah this was uh this was a game that was near and dear to me um yeah just kind of looking at some of those the book the books in there um but yeah just like uh the macross do you remember love kind of follows the same story uh it follows both the television story and the um uh, and the movie story of do you remember love um, so it has two kind of different versions of the game. Um, they kind of go both through both storylines, which is kind of cool. So you kind of get two games in one with it. But um, but yeah, uh, the graphics are a little dated, but it still holds up pretty well for a PlayStation 2 game, um, I have to admit. Um, given that I am playing on an Xbox c- controller, it, it will feel kind of out of place a little bit, I think. But we're going to try it out. We're going to see. Um, there's going to be some learning curves. Obviously, I don't have the the ability to, to obtain super rank anymore. But we will definitely uh, play through some of the game so you can kind of see it and uh, make you wish that you had it yourself. So, <laughs> basically. Um, so I'm going to kind of take a look at some things here, and then we're going to get you get you running on that. All right, so back over here. Oh, here's uh, the main splash screen here. Okay. So you have, like I said, you have the... I think it's just going to go through the main story here, so... I didn't mean to jump right into it, but oh well. Anyway, um, so basically, the story goes that a giant alien ship crashes on Earth. Earth, uh, you know, the Earth Terrans take the ship, rebuild it, make it their own. Well, the giant, the giant aliens, the Zentradi, which we spoke about last time, they come in, come onto Earth uh, in looking for the ship. And they find that we have taken it over, and because it was so strange to them, they observe and attack rather than, like, full-out destruction, which they could destroy us at any, like, the Earth Terrans at any moment. So, basically, it's kind of like a cat and mouse thing. It's like, well, um, they keep us at, they keep us at length, but they also kind of, uh watch over to see what we're doing as well. So, that's kind of what all of this is about. Um, this part is uh, kind of specific to the TV series. They talk about the unification wars. Basically, the all governments in the world uh, fight to take control over the Macross ship that it crash landed on that, on that island. And basically, um, this is what that's talking about. So eventually the, the war stops and uh, they unify all the people in order to build the ship. Or repair the ship to their, to their standings there. And that's what that's all talking about. So this is where it's going to have you choose between the, uh, uh, the story for the television show and the uh, movie. Uh, the Do You Remember Love movie. So, 
Obviously, I don't know what any of these. They're saying exactly, but. So, the RMD01, that's the uh, Do You Remember Love? Prometheus is the television show. So, we're gonna go with Prometheus first. Prometheus, Alright. So basically this is the launch ceremony for the, the Macross, and this is what we're... This is where the first episode of Macross picks up, is uh, they're at the celebration for the launch, and end up getting attacked by the Trotty. Captain J. Global and Claudia LaSalle. Okay. Oh, uh, this is a. She's talking about the trajectory of how they're gonna how they're gonna launch off and what they're gonna end up doing. So they pick up a signature on the other side of, I think. Uh, I think this is just trajectory for their launch plans, if I remember correctly. Man, part of the show, it just automatically shoots off without warning because there's a, like, alien ship signature on the other side of the moon. And it blasts a scout ship from the Zentradi aliens. That's Misa Hayase, or Lisa Hayes, if you're a Robotech fan. No, but yeah, shot alien ships, and basically, now they did not do it automatic. They did not do it. It was just the ship was built by aliens, so it had kind of like a booby trap on it, and hence the first name of the episode is Booby Trap. So. So of course that initiates them to attack. And so we're off to attack the on oncoming forces here. Really should have seen if I could have gotten into the training mode here. Should have done that first. Oh well. I do not remember the controller, the controls at all. Okay. これは演習ではない。繰り返す。これは演習ではない。スカルリーダーよりスカル7番機。上がってきたな、ヒオコ。いきなりの実戦だが、落ち着いていけ。目的は敵空戦部隊の殲滅だ。気を抜くなよ。Valkyrie. 
隊の各機へ敵地上部隊多数接近中 B 隊形を取って地上の敵を殲滅してくださいSee how intense the little gun battles are. A little bit better than that. You remember love stuff. Do all the maneuvers too. There's little dodge maneuvers you can do. Okay, so we warded off the enemy tanks for attack. See how bad I did on this one. Ooh, yeah, definitely need some practice. <laughs> All right, so I unlocked the F1A. Yeah, and I wish I had a an American translation of this, so I know what the hell is going on. Okay, ブリーフィングを行う。現在本館は地表120キロを周回、これを中空母アームド1、ダークウィッチアーミー、アームド2、ダークウィッチアーミー、ダークウィッチアーミー、ダークウィッチアーミー、ダークウィッチアーミー、
ちらガンサイトワン敵攻撃部隊接近護衛機各隊は戦闘準備衛星軌道上に高エネルギー反応急速接近中Basically, they're going back down to Earth to uh, forget why they're going back to the surface, but they're going to go do a fold maneuver right near the Earth's surface. is fairly unique where it gives you the option to shoot with your kind of like your head cannon which is what that is right there that's kind of how you ward off missiles in uh, battle roid mode
This is where I need to catch up to the macro. On that one, maybe I'll push the other one. Stay cold on it, I stand on it. Pull the cold hole, open I must. Marky Taiwa, so the mother is taking three naked with your gay 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 Let's be on the bridge there.
That's what it was. I just was too far away. Oh. So that's a fold, basically, is the transportation of the ship. Uh, kind of like a, uh, um, I guess you could call it like a portal mini black hole that they uh, teleport through. It's kind of like a thing in a Star Trek thing. God, see again. But it's teleportation, it's a space fold, basically. Take take one one point of space and connect to another, and it's supposed to map them to a trajectory on the other side of the moon. But to uh, dock with the RMD one and two, but basically because they this is a test of technology to the humans, they end up doing it too close to the surface, and as you can see there, they take they end up taking the whole island with them. And ending up on the other side of Pluto. So they take the civilization that was on the island and they bring it inside the, the ship. Um, and basically all the people are on board the ship now. So, that's what that's all about. So basically, you're supposed to protect Macross while you have the, uh, the, uh, the health bar for the Macross below. You have to watch these guys. The horn. There's one set to get close to the ship and try and blow it up. But if you're not careful, your own missiles will blow it up too. You gotta watch for your trajectory on those missiles there. Basically, you're trying to fend off all these attackers. Because you are without the shield. You can the whole system. Check it out, basically. So, you get ranked on a lot of stuff in this game. Like, your ability to uh, stave off attackers, your ability not to get hit. <laughs> so, essentially, the game is concerned that you really don't want to lose a lot of health. And your objective, you don't want them to lose a lot of health in there either. Of course, you're trying to time as well. So they're talking about trans modular transformation in order to try and help with the, the loss of the, the shield system that they Let me get back over to Macross. I'm not going to get a very good rank on this one. This is not one of my favorites. It's hard to get an S rank on this one. How many times I ended up playing this one in the one where you get attacked by Maria? Transformation Okay, so we're almost where we can where the ship can transform. Transformation Shido.
again, you gotta be careful with the missiles, otherwise if they hit the ship, it counts against you. Watching this stuff, especially this, these games in particular, it's helpful to know what's going on in the story. Basically, they have to. The whole premise of the transformation in the story is that they have to transform the ship in order to couple two power sources together so that not only can they get their weapon systems working, which you're going to see here, but eventually uh, work on a new uh, shield system. Yeah, so there's the Macross finally transforming. Oh, I didn't do too bad on that one. So as you progress through the game, okay, so right now you're get you're getting promoted to squad leader. Uh, now these are game characters. Uh, I don't know who what their names are actually are. You're an actual game character too. Um, but you get assigned squad mates, and um, as you progress through the game, you, you can rank up and unlock different uh, ships as well, or Valkyries. So you get assigned two wingmen. And this, this is actually a character from the game. His name is Roy Foker. So, um, the main squad leader for the Skull, uh, Skull Squadron. And these two guys, I don't know who they are. Again, they're new characters. She's a new character for the game, too, so I'm not sure who she is either. So you get a new ship, um, different color scheme, as you can see. Okay. So you have different grades of ships. And really, the only difference that you can really tell on them is the, it's the head model, so... There you go. So, so you got. Well, did I get uh, Max's VF1J too? Cool. So there's really no difference in the ships that I've noticed. Um, they just seem to fly a little bit faster, I think, as you progress, but otherwise, uh, the head cannons are really the only thing that differs between them. Okay, so this mission's really cool because you end up going through the rings of Saturn as kind of like a, uh, like a surprise attack. So we go through the shadow zone of the, shat of the uh, Saturn rings um, in order to... So, Basically, what's going on in the story right now is that uh, you're making your way back to Earth, um, and the Zentradi ships are just kind of pecking at you. They're keeping you at bay. They're just seeing what your attack are like because your ra the human race is new to them. Uh, we kind of discussed that in the Do You Remember Love stream, but basically, they're just like, "This is not normal. What, what are they doing?" Type of thing. So basically, we're we're go in this part of the game. We kind of go towards the ring of Saturn, uh, Saturn, and we turn around and attack them surprisingly. So 
we go into the shadow zone over here and launch a surprise attack um, towards these Zentradi that are following us. And that's what they're talking about. So, basically, you have your enemy ships that you're going to turn around on. And you kind of have to fly through the asteroids here without being detected. So, これの方まで敵を攻撃し、マクロス中央陸戦場に敵艦を誘い、中央発射のカウントダウンを始めます。ただちに全速間違っても中央火線上でぐずぐずしないよう。以上です。はい。オレンジパープルローズはバルキリー
間進路予測完了接触まで90秒です Kind of hack way to do it, but whatever. <laughs> it works sometimes. That's the uh, new shield system that came up with it's called Pinpoint Barrier. Uh, because it can't. Because when they lost the. the in, I guess you could say the. Uh, pinpoint. The uh, shield system when they pulled it. Um, you have the. Uh, they couldn't fix it correctly, so they had to come up with a way called the Pinpoint System where they take the, uh, the shield, kind of break it up, and. Uh, point it in directions to where, you know, missiles and stuff are coming in. So, uh, that's a lot better than I thought I'd get, but... But you can see how, <laughs> how I cheesed that one. <laughs> Okay, so basically you took the pain, pinpoint barrier, put it all in the front ship, punched through the whole of the Entrati ship, and this is what they're talking about, where they have all the uh, enemy ships at the end of the bridge, where once they're in the enemy ship, they just fire a volley inside. So we reach Mars, and basically we... Um, in the show, you're looking for the Mars base, and long story short, we're supposed to pick up supplies, we're, you know, several months in, trying to pick up supplies from the Mars base, and basically we end up landing on the Mars base, and of course we get attacked there, and you'll see that in a minute. So we're just gonna kind of hang out on the edge while they pick up supplies. Just kind of uh, guard. And the thing about this one is that the Trotty arrived ahead of time, and they're gonna launch a surprise attack from the surface of Mars. This is, this is that right here. This is kind of the way I cheat this one too. Push to send them off. They don't get smashed off. So, basically, you're just supposed to ward them off. I think you're not 
really supposed to do it this way, but that's the best way it works. Ah, come to me. So, this is like character in the show that is super aggressive, goes against his superiors all the time. Kamajin, the ally killer is what they call him on the Ventrati side, so... Just pick up Misa Hayase, who is on, on the base. <clears throat> so, 
what she does is she goes onto the base, uh, sets off the reactor to blow up. Uh, because basically what's happened is that they laid a trap for the Macross. They did a gravity well so that they could take off. And so that, that's what you were trying to do is fend off the attack so that uh, they could work at blowing up the base and attack that gravity well so that the Macross could take off again. So. And that's why it blew up at the end. Okay, so the Macross takes off from Mars. Uh, aboard the Macross, basically, what's going on is civilization keeps going. You have, uh, if you remember last time when we were talking about Do You Remember Love, it was Min Mei. Uh, she was a singer on board. Well, that hadn't happened in the show yet, and basically that's what's going on now is that she's rising to stardom. Uh, her and Hikaru are starting a relationship. And um, basically, you start. She starts becoming a central point in the war against these Entrati because, at some point, uh, the Entrati start picking up on their on the in the civilization side of the ship, and um, pick up on Min Mei's song, and that becomes instrumental in turning their turning their attention uh, to wanting culture for themselves, basically. So that's kind of what this is all about. Just a Miss Macross contest where Min May starts to become a a star. And this is based on an episode where all everybody is watching this Miss Macross show, and Karu has to go out by himself on patrol. And his attention is more focused on the Miss Macross process rather than what he's supposed to be doing. So just like Karu, you go out in uh, full battleoid armor. And the radio chatter that you hear right now is, is about the Miss Macross contest as it proceeds on the ship. So this is a recon convoy, a recon ship that, with the, uh, call the Lollicon 3, there's the, <laughs> there's the Zentradi spies that the Zentradi send out to go, uh, kind of take a look at things, and this is their first interaction with broadcast, uh, uh human broadcast, so... This is them talking about. So you see Min Mei there in the corner.
the ability to dodge missiles in this game is a little hard because you have to stick one way and then flip the other. off the spy craft. <laughs> so, this is uh, Min Mei. She wins Miss Macross contest. That's what that's about, right there. Better than C, I guess. <laughs> they hit me pretty hard when they ran me, so... That really, really hurt a lot, so... Contest. The spies tell the tell about the contest in the Zentradi ships, and uh, basically that causes a disarray because they're like, what is going on? So, so I think that is going to be a good place to stop. この領域を攻撃により、将来さらに攻撃により、この領域を攻撃により、将来さらに攻撃により、将来さらに攻撃により、将来さらに攻撃により、将来さらに攻撃により、将来さらに攻撃により、将来さらに攻撃により、将来さ